G'day everyone, how are you? And welcome to tonight's um, podcast. Um, I'm um, filling here in for, in for Warren, he's in transit at the moment and um, he was going to join us, but you've just got me. Um, I will say that um, I've got really unstable internet and it doesn't matter which connection I'm using, it's all the same. So we'll give this a go and see how it works out. Um, just make sure that we're recording because I did one the other day and we didn't record it and I got in all sorts of trouble. It must be. Hey, yep, we are. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, and it's um, it's going to be a um, just just a basically a recap of of what we've talked about a lot. But tonight's webinar is all about why a sovereign individual um, would want a plan B, and we're on the um, uh, the month of being sovereign and and being a sovereign individual. So we can um, keep going, and just remember that this is. Uh, not financial information. Um, we never provide financial inf information. Um, we are an education provider. If you need full financial advice, please seek a financial services licensee before making a financial decision. So why sovereign individuals have a plan B? Purely and simply, it's an emergency plan. Um, it's something that you put together that um, you use if and when or maybe um, you need... Um, a an escape um, from a society societal collapse. Um, it's something that um, that you may need to put in place uh, beforehand. It's like an insurance policy, and that's what we're we're talking about here. Is um, these plans work whether you actually use them or not? Right, they they're a good thing. It's like car insurance. You 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 get car insurance not because you think that. Uh, you're going to um, have your car stolen or your car blow up or um, catch on fire. Um, you get it because it's an it as it says in the tin, it's an insurance in case of. Um, and these plans work whether they're actioned or not. And when I say actioned or not, I'm talking about they are actioned by you physically undertaking everything that you've planned for. Um, that being, you may um, you may put certain parts of it in place, but others you might not action until it's actually really need to, but you have the option through the structuring and the checklist and what you've done to be able to get out of Dodge. Uh, for instance, one of the things that we're going to be talking about, especially for those that, that are in our uh, mastery or sovereign uh, secure your wealth, um, class, we're going to be talking about um, personal security and privacy and that in, in the coming months um, and all that sort of stuff. Just knowing, um, for instance, in, in your plan B, just knowing how to get out of your city, right? The different means and ways that you can get out. Can you get out by water? Can you get out by land? Can you get out by air? How do you get out? Um, if the roads are blocked, how do you get out? You know, where, where do you go? Uh, do you have an emergency preparedness kit uh, if the electricity and water goes out? Right, just basically little things like these. And and what the plan will also do, um, it gets you thinking, right? Um, I know people that have got these plans and they go all out. I mean, all, all, all out. You know they've got the 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 residents in the country with the with the underground bunker and the 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 um the arms and the food storage and they they've got biodiesel plants that they make from you know fish and chip oil and all this sort of stuff and they've got other ways and alternate means they're disconnected from the grid they collect their own water they process their own uh, own waste. They, they compost, they farm, they do all this sort of stuff. You can go really to the nth degree on these plans or you can just make sure that you've got it all documented and the, then the basics done um, and, and the basics is what we're going to cover tonight here, the, the, the several basic things that you can do 
um, that work with or without um, you actually having to fully action the plan or go into um, a huge uh, expense of doing something. But a sovereign individual will have it because we are moving into societal collapse. There'll be some form, not necessarily here in Australia, it's actually less likely here in Australia than it is in other places around the world, US, Canada, uh, Europe, Europe for sure. Uh, and when I say societal collapse, it, it's predominantly going to either come from two ways. It's going to come from um, some form of civil unrest uh, in the form of um, total distrust uh, of government and institutions. So in other words, you're going to go into a, a civil war of such or it's going to be an actual war. It's going to be a ground war that is going to be triggered through some form of uh, action um, that is taken and we're, we're back into World War II in Europe. Um, I do personally, this is my personal opinion and my personal opinion only, that we are in the realm in the next decade of seeing another ground war in Europe um, and... Uh, it's it's hit or miss whether it'll be stopped or not, um, but I do believe that we are very likely to see uh, troops on the ground from many nations uh, in Europe again, and, and that's a sad state of affairs. Um, it's also an escape for a better life. Um, a lot of people look at these Plan Bs, and it could be that, uh, for instance, that you're in an industry that thrives somewhere else. Um, it could be that you want your retirement savings to go further. So you are looking for somewhere else to move to. Um, Americans at the moment are moving to Central America. Um, Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, um, some of the Caribbean islands, because they get better bang for their buck uh, living in those jurisdictions. Australians, Bali, Fiji, Vanuatu, um, Thailand, uh, all through, you know, uh, Philippines. Uh, retirement visas and all that sort of stuff because you get better bang for your buck. Um, and that is what what you may be seeking. You may be seeking that your 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 plan B is going to get you that better life. And 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 it could be that it's six months in Australia and three months and three months somewhere else where you've got access to better uh, medical care. There is a lot better medical care than in, in some different places around the world than you get here in Australia. Uh, Turkey, for instance, for dental and, and cosmetic surgery. Thailand for a whole range of dental, medical procedures, uh, stem cell therapy, stuff that you can't get here in Australia, um, but is available um, elsewhere. So the plan is also, you know, are you looking for a better life? And just about everyone at some point in time will have that, ah, uh, is it greener on the other side? And sometimes you've got to plan for it and go and have a look. And as I've said before, it's really massively an insurance against the future. None of us know what the future holds. We can only speculate. Um, we can only look at the past to see what's happened before. Um, and we all know that there is many cycles at the moment that are all congregating together um, to form massive change where we're seeing empire shifts uh, between the west into the east we're seeing um, tyrannical governments rise up you know with what happened through covid we're seeing corporatism uh, massively on the rise uh, as we speak where the the small business owner is being driven out um, which means that we don't live in a capitalist society anymore we've now live in a corporatist society and that's a massive distinction and pretty much most of the people um in the world don't understand the difference between corporatism and capitalism. Uh, they think capitalism's bad. Capitalism isn't bad. Um, it's what's got us to be the most prosperous sort of nations in the world. Um, corporatism is bad. When corporates are basically acting as semi-governments, that is bad. And that is what needs to be quelled. And that is what needs to, uh, to be disbanded. Um, in, in the US, for instance, uh, corporations can't go direct to um, elected members. They have to use a lobbyist. So a lobbyist is just a corruption mechanism. Um, and 
we, we, we're seeing it here in Australia. We're seeing it definitely in the UK and in Europe where lobbyists, lobbyists are becoming the gateway uh, to a lot of the politicians and a lot of our bureaucrats. Um, and there's big money involved. Um, you know, corporate donations are, are what political parties thrive on. So, and and that will deteriorate the trust in our institutions and, and in our governments and in our big corporates more and more as, as that becomes revealed and the general populace really seeing what's going on. So setting yourself up with a, a form of plan B is a real underpinning of what uh, you will actually need um, to create this self-insurance against anything that happens in the future. Now, is it 100% foolproof? Nothing ever is. Um, will it need to be changed and modified? 100%. Um, as, as the world moves, um, you'll have to change. The one thing I will say is you need to use the laws of the land, but use them in your favour. The rules are actually written um, to favour some of the techniques. Um, that Just have a look at how the rich, rich work. Um, for instance, the rich don't use these unregistered foundations and, you know, bits of documents saying that I'm sovereign and all this sort of stuff. Um, they don't. They work within the system. Um, and a lot of that stuff that that people are peddling on that foot are just going to lead you into a lot of trouble. So making sure that you've got your insurance policy correct and it's lawful Um with the laws of the land as they stand at the moment, regardless of you like them or not, they are the laws of the land. Um, and so you need to, to work in with them and you need to be able to navigate the, the system and move forward. So what is a plan B? Moving on why you should have one, and we all know now why you should have one in those, those areas. So really, what is it? As I've said before, it's a backup plan. But it's more than a backup plan. It is. It can actually become a way of life, uh, depending on how far you want to take it. And as I said before, there are some people that take this right to the nth degree um, and and really live this life um, and live it to a, a, a level that I'm not comfortable living. Um, there is people out there that I know and I am friends with that that really are the preppers of the the early late nineties, early two thousands, and they are very successful at it, and they do it quite well. They have um, uh, very sustainable businesses and investments, uh, and they they are working um, for all intents and purposes uh, when they're in the big city, so to speak, as doctors, lawyers, accountants. Um, directors of companies, engineers, um, and so forth, entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs. Um, but in their private lives, they are planning and they are preparing for um, for what may come. So they have a very large backup. Plan. I've got other people that that are just small business owners um, who who I've worked with that just want the basics, second citizenship. A residency, know how to get out of Dodge, have a few investments that are secured in a way um, that makes it hard for uh, people to get at. And they they just have that as their backup and it works. The other thing a plan is, it's knowledge and proven strategies. So one of the biggest thing is, is you've got to be open to, to new knowledge and, and I'm learning all the time. As the system changes, I need to change. I need to learn. I need to upgrade what's going on. Um, I've been doing this for well and truly over 20 years now. And I can tell you from when I started to now, the system has totally changed. I would say it's um, it's gone through probably 10 major phases of change. The biggest one, of course, come about not around 9-11 and especially when the Patriot Act was introduced. That changed the game forever. COVID has changed the game once again. Um, and then in between then, there has been little sections of changes and, and proven strategies uh, have altered, um, but they are now 
once again proven and 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 are workable. And you get this knowledge from from digging into the right sources. The right stuff is not always on the surface, um, and it definitely won't be uh, on the seven o'clock news. Um, a plan B is all about actionable checklists. It's things that you can do and action straight away in three months, six months, 12 months, or as needed. Um, you know, I, I know of people that have residencies overseas and COVID was a prime example of this. Um, people that had residencies overseas and second citizenships, they were able to get out of the location they were in they were able to go to their second location or, or their second residency um, that had basically no major restrictions. And they were able to operate their businesses. They were able to keep going um, because they they had the options. Right? They, they knew that if X happened, they took steps X, Y, and Z through their checklist and away they went. It's resources. One of the biggest thing that all of us need um, is resources. And resources are people. Um, resources are um, water, food, uh, knowing where to get that, knowing how to to, to um, procure that money, finances. Um, there is so many different resources that you may need. Uh, medical care, uh, for instance, but it's knowing where all these resources are. It's compiling the best of what you need and how you need it. And and having the, the wherewithal to be able to access those resources because most of those resources aren't available to the general people. You have to go into different groups. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't political active, politically active, but they should be because that's a resource. Being as close to the centre of government allows you to get wind of what's happening in government before it appears in the 7 o'clock news. Because I can tell you now, the stuff that, that you get from being involved in the political movement, I, for a lot of times, have the information available to me because I'm on the email lists of politicians or bureaucrats or departments before it makes it to the mainstream media. In some cases, it's weeks before. You know, just simple things being on the Gazette and um, the Gazette lists um, when new laws are promulgated and published, just to see what is being promulgated and published, being on uh, the email list of politicians that are pushing certain agendas so you can see what they're trying to do through what they put out. So having access to a, a vast amount of resources um, puts you ahead of the game. And the last thing, and it's not the only thing, but it's the last thing for tonight in we're, what we're doing tonight is that it works if you need it or not. That the steps that you put in place work regardless if you have to to really trigger what, what I call the, the, um, the death knell um, march, like the pull the parachute strings so to speak. So if you put a lot of these policies in place and you are on the path to the basics of this, basically the five basics uh, of what this is, um, it'll work whether you actually need to action any of the items or not. And that is one of the, the biggest keys of what a plan B is. So what makes up a plan B? Um, the, the five major parts of it here um and i've actually probably got the first two wrong i should have had uh, uh um the first part of it is having a clear financial uh, having a clear understanding of your aims and, and objectives and your goals that's number one that should be number one um then it's you're looking at second citizenships and residencies because they're quite easy to to look at or get or prepare for asset protection making sure that you are protecting your assets to some degree. Um, and the worst thing that you can do is protect your assets in your own name, um, especially if you're in a, a, 
a a job that could bring heat. Um, you know, doctors, for instance, lawyers, uh, professional services people from that way that you can get uh, sued for your profession. Um, or you're just a successful entrepreneur. People will look at you uh, and go, I want what he has. Financial independence or, or income generation is hugely, hugely important uh, when putting together your plan B. Uh, no one that I know of that has successfully um, triggered a plan B or successfully um, operates at the higher levels with a plan B is in a job. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to not be in a job, um, but if you're in a job, certain parts of this uh, won't won't work because you won't have the freedom of travel or you won't have the freedom to, to, um, to uh, work on your time. But if if you're in a job and you want to remain in a job, you can design a plan B that suits. And it might be certain things that you just don't do. It might be a lot of onshoring rather than offshoring. It might be um, having different, um, you know, having different assets or different uh, residencies and options available to you in multiple states. Um, you know, you might have something in North Queensland and live and work in Sydney and that your major escape route is North Queensland, um, if need be. So you just need to work out. But financial independence um, is of, of great importance to anyone who really wants to um, undertake a sovereign lifestyle. Uh, because once again, it means that, because you've got to remember is what we're, we're talking about here, especially during this month and when we talk about sovereignty is it's living life on your terms. It's being able to control how you um, you operate and and having a job or being tied to a job um, is not l totally living. Now, we, we've all got to create an income. We've all got to go step by step. But your ultimate goal should be, I have the financial independence and, the, and ability to, to work outside the realms of a nine to five. And, and last but not least, and we'll talk about this tonight, is, is asset planning. And asset planning, uh, estate planning, sorry, is um, is what happens to your money um, when you plan, pass. Um, is there going to be a shit fight over your will? Is there going to be, do you have a will? Is there going to be a, a shit fight over um, your trust and the beneficiaries? You know, do you have the right debt for beneficiaries? Do you have the beneficiaries marked out um, in your trust? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through um, some of these uh, these items uh, that make up the plan B and um, and we'll go from there. Um, so second citizenships. Most people um, have access to um, a second citizenship through ancestry. It's one of the things that a lot of people um, can and um can access because we're, most of us are, are from somewhere else. Australia is a is a place that is um, highly migrant uh, cent, um, migrant centric. Uh, most of us at one point in time come from somewhere else, and then so that means that we if we look back farther further farther far enough um, back through our ancestry, we can normally find somewhere. If you can't, um, there is other options. Um, and naturalization, so moving somewhere and, and, and taking up a second citizenship, buying a second citizenship, um, uh, or having one granted uh, to you for, for, spe for a special uh, deed is all, all possible. Marrying someone, um, having a child uh, in, in certain locations can give that child a passport, which then um, after a few years that the child can... Um, be reunited with its parents uh, and then you can get a passport that way so second citizenships are all available um, to us it depends on which pathway that you'll have to take but i employ everyone employ implore everyone um to go and have a look at um um 
what is there and what is available to you. So, and that that's that's um, an easy way um, of moving to a second citizenship. Um, there's a couple of questions here. I'll just quickly go through. Um, uh, yes, the, the recording will be um, in the um, in the um, GWC members areas. Uh, Darlene says uh, most of us adults may be able to claim dual citizenship, but not necessarily our children. Um, not always. It depends on the country, and it depends on the country's rules, and it depends on um, how the claim is made. Um, for instance, with the UK, if you're claiming through your mother, um, you can't pass it on. But if you're claiming through your father, you can. Uh, Ireland it can be the same. Uh, it depends on on how the claim is made um, can be determined if you can pass it on or not. So, and that's your second citizenship. If you if you're predominantly your predominant citizenship, that is passed uh, on. Um, and then there is other ways of of um, passing uh, on. One of the best gifts, and, and it's one of the biggest tourism things that's happening at the moment, is um, in, in this world, is people are going to suit certain countries um, that um, allow children to be born with um, a citizenship. So the US, for instance, does it. Um, there is several Central American countries. Brazil is one. Um, that there's a few um, Eastern European countries as well. Um, you got to have the right circumstances. But if the child is born on that soil, it is automatically a citizen of of that country. So you can actually gift citizenship by having children in in certain countries, and it's quite an easy uh, process. Um, to um to undertake uh what the, i forget what they're calling it um it's not citizenship um it's not citizenship ter um tourism that they, they, there there is a term for it um but it's basically citizenship tourism like medical tourism um and and all the rest of them i know people that have moved overseas um and and worked and lived uh, for instance, in, in other countries for three or four years, then had children there. And they've done that so that they could have second passports for their children um, because they were born there. So they got naturalised and and then were able to do it. Canada, I know you can do that through. Um, you can do a naturalisation process. And then, um, and then when your children are born there, um, they automatically become Canadians, for instance. Second residency is very similar to, to second citizenships. Um, pretty much most of us uh, qualify for one somewhere. Um, there's different levels uh, of, of residency. There's basically, if you have a look at it, there's a residency um, uh, pyramid. And at the bottom is a basic tourism visa. You're allowed 90 days. And and in this world of, of digital nomad uh, world, they... It's actually now called the ninety, the, what they call the ninety day rule. So, as a tourist, you're pretty much allowed to stay anywhere for ninety days, and then you move on. The next level up is self sufficiency visas. There is these are com commonly now becoming called uh, digital nomad visas. These digital nomad visas are, um, uh, you know, give you um, the the benefit to stay in a country for. A predetermined time, normally anywhere between twelve and uh, twelve and um, seventy months, uh, uh, and then after that, you you've got to leave and and, and move on. Um, that's sort of the shorter term, intermediate <clears throat> visa. Then there is short term PR or also or short term residency visas. These visas are normally anywhere up to 10, 15 years. Um, and they they tend to be um, visas that uh, you get based on work, um, that you're moving somewhere to undertake work for an X amount of period, or you qualify through an investment scheme or uh, some other scheme. Now, these are very common now. You quite often hear of them 
called junior golden visas. Um, and then you, these visas, once again, that it's, it's self-sufficiency or you're, you're claiming um, uh, the ability to stay somewhere. Then you have um, long-term stay that aren't quite permanent residency, um, but they're pretty much open-ended. Um, you don't get the full benefits of um, of permanent residency, but you'll get the benefits of taxation. You get the benefits of everything. These are, tend to be where the golden visas, the visas, the residency by investment world um, remind uh, sort of reside. And then at the top level, you've got what's called permanent residency. So it means you have um, the right to remain in that country for a permanent period of time. You're not a citizen, but you have permanent residence, which means that you can reside there for as long as you want. And as long as uh, you don't, you know, violate that um, that residency status. So you can pick in the triangle, in, in the pyramid, where you want to want to sit. Um, and some people have uh, permanent residency. Some people have self-sufficiency visas. Uh, some people have golden visas. Um, you know, Thai elite is a prime example. It's 5, 10, 15, 20 year uh, time frame and you, and you buy them. Um, then you've got the the full golden visas that are in the likes of Malta and Cyprus and um, and the UK, for instance, all have, uh, they are uh, basically a, a very long stay uh, residency visa that you get and, and you get all the benefits of of living there if you want to, or you don't even have to. Um, you can be a, still classed as a tax resident um, and you only have to spend five, seven days a year uh, in that locale. But you can't be claimed by anywhere else in the world as a tax resident, which means in most places you can't stay there for any longer than 180 days in a year, or otherwise you'll be deemed to then have transferred your residency to a new locale. Um, and you can't have, you know, have a driver's license, there, open bank accounts in, in that location, anything that will make you domiciled uh, in that place. So second residency is something that that should be looked at. And, it, and it's also part of the better life strategy. Um, for instance, you might want to retire somewhere. So have a look at getting residency there now, um, buying a, a condo there that you would uh, move into when you retired or it's somewhere where you go and, um, you know, visit three months of the year or whatever. Now, uh, for a, a longer term, better life strategy in 10 years time, for instance. So it's all part of this strategy and, and how you build it up. Asset protection, uh, one of the biggest things that, you need to look at and you need to be aware of how um, your assets are held. Um, the worst place to hold your assets are in your personal name and um, the ultimate place to hold your assets is in a name that is not associated with you and you, and you have benefit of but don't control. It's the uh, own... Own nothing but control everything rule. Um, good old John D. Rockefeller. And he did this through through trusts. Um, and a lot of the trusts that the very wealthy use have professional trustees. Um, so they are third party uh, people that are, that look that are, are professionally engaged um, to manage manage trusts on behalf of, of an individual. And in a lot of places uh, around the world, you can't actually be the trustee of a trust unless you are regulated, um, unless you are licensed by the country. Uh, Australia's got a very, very um, unique um, way of having corporate trustees that aren't regulated. And, um, and that is just something that pretty much everywhere else in the world doesn't have. Um, corporate trustees have to be regulated. Uh, a lot of places allow individuals to be trustees um, of assets without having to have any regulatory environment, but they um, they normally have what's called oversight, not regulation. And oversight might mean that the accounts of the trust have to be audited. Um, so just 
knowing what different um, different vehicles and entities are used around the world to protect assets uh, can save you a lot of heartache and drama uh, down the road. Um, but also knowing that Australia uh, is quite a unique animal uh, in the way that we form formation uh, formate our our trust laws. Um, so that's that is um, the entity side of thing, and, and entities are always your friend um, when it comes to asset protection. Um, the the first line of defence should be to have anything you want to store in an entity's name, um, especially uh, you know even if it's just a, a company um, rather than a trust or or whatever, and that just creates that, that one la one extra barrier um, against any attack. Uh, on the asset um, and sometimes um, if you're going for certain lending or certain um, uh, monetization strategies uh, they will need to be in a company name or in some form of entity name uh, anyway so that a, a security can be placed against that um, that entity um, which is actually another way of, of protecting an asset um, financial independence, as, as we've talked about before, um, financial independence, I believe, is one of the biggest um, sort of biggest areas to, to look at is, is making sure that you can derive an income of some level uh, and a level that you are comfortable with um, through some means and mechanism. Um, that doesn't mean that it has to be a business or it has to be investments. It could be a combination of everything. Um, and that gives you um, an income at the end, but it has to be reliable and dependable, right? And this is where um, being an entrepreneur or being a business owner um, or, you know, self-employed business owner, if you have a look at the Robert Kiyosaki quadrant, um, employee, self-employed business owner, investor, anything on the right-hand side of that quadrant gives you the financial independence um, that you're looking for. And being, um, being able to, to move through that, um, that quadrant or those quadrants um, ex expediate or, or uh, expand your ability uh, to have more options which then gives you a better insurance coverage um, whenever something does strike or go wrong. So th these are just things that to, to have, have a look and think about. If you have a look at the the, the elites of the world, um, none of them are in jobs. It's just how it is. They are all independently, uh, financially independent. And they all, so sorry, they all, they're all financially independent. They all independently drive an income um, that isn't connected. Um, normally multiple streams of income. Um, there is different strategies around multiple streams of income. But in the early days of generation, it's the, what you want to do is take one stream of income and it's normally your efforts and then convert that to uh, assets that produce cash flow and then use that cash flow then to create multiple streams um, of income at the end of the cycle. And um, we go through the whole wealth generation uh, thing in the programs that we talk about. And the, the, the wealth formula um, is quite a simple formula, um, but it, it's, it's something that because it is rather so simple, most, most of us, look at it and go, no, that probably will never work. So it's something to um, to look at uh, and, and to be aware of that to be truly independent uh, and to be truly sovereign, um, you need to be driving your own um, sort of financial independence. Um, the last one we're going to talk about tonight is, is estate planning. Um, estate planning is not just putting a trust in place but estate planning is is what it says. It's a plan, so it is knowing that um, where you want your money 
to end up or your assets to end up or who you want to benefit at the end of the day. Now, this could be, um, I, I know of people that go, okay, you know, I've got an estate of 10 million. Uh, I've got three kids. They're going to get a million dollars each in a trust fund. That trust fund will then provide them, you know, 70 grand a year um, in a um, an annuity because it's invested X, Y, Z. Um, then the balance of it is going to go to causes that I want to um, uh, want to support, or it goes to create a foundation to, to then um, use that money to support causes. That's an estate plan. But on top of that, that's the basic plan. Then you need to have the structures um, and the documentation in place to make sure that that happens. Um, for instance, uh, most of us forget our wills. The wills are probably the most important document um, that we neglect um, because a badly drawn will or not having a will at all or not having any way of saying, I want to leave this to, you know, little Peter or little Paul or little Jenny um, on my passing or I want this to go to, you know, save the whales. Um, uh, and if it's not done lawfully, you can end up in a whole heap of mess where the people that are trying to, that you're trying to help still can't access that thing. So you need to make sure your wills are up to date and that they are current with the, the laws pertaining um, to transfer of assets on death. Um, now, same with... Um, with trusts, most trusts and that are designed in especially places like Australia have you as the first beneficiaries, right? And and that is fine. But then what it says is it's just a whole heap of gooblygook for the the second secondary and tertiary beneficiaries. So if you pass away, your trust, the trustee, and and the other thing is, is in Australia is the trustees are normally the beneficiaries as well. Um, so if you pass away and you don't have a, a mechanism to transfer the trusteeship of your trust to another trustee or another person that can activate that trustee, um, whether it's through the corporate charter of the trustee, whether it's through the will or whether it's through some other mechanism or it's written in the trust deed um, or that you have a protector of the trust that can step in. A lot of people, once again, the trustee, first line beneficiary and protector are all the same people. So as, as soon as those people go or that, that individual goes, your trust pretty much collapses and then it can be a major shit fight to sort it out. So making sure that is planned properly, that the, the, the trustee knows how to, to distribute from the, 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 the primary beneficiaries to the secondary beneficiaries to the tertiary beneficiaries and making sure that you are clear on who those, those especially the secondary beneficiaries are, um, are on your death because they become the primary beneficiaries. Uh, of the trust. So making sure that that transition is clear and well thought out and well planned um, is is of, of major importance. And it is something that, that everyone on here tonight can go and do. You can go and check your will. If you've got trust, you can check, check your trust deeds. You can, you can write it out on paper, draw it out. And, and the way I like to do it is draw it out, you know, triangle for the trust, a little square for the trustee, little stick figure for, for the individuals and and just map it out on a bit of paper what happens if X, Y, and Z happens. Um, one of the cases that uh, I was involved with in um, when I was living in Malta, the whole family was killed. The... Um, it basically took out the entire family. It, it took out seven people. Um, the primary family and um, 
some beneficiaries are all on the one private aircraft and the private aircraft went down. They're, they're, luckily, though, their trust was managed by a professional trust firm. The protector was on the aircraft, so the trust then never had a protector. But the beneficiaries passed the first line weren't defined well enough. And the trustee had basically free reign where to send that money. And we know for a fact, and the trustee actually, because of the trustee was very, very friendly with the, with the family, understood where um, that they, they wanted the, the funds to, to eventually go was able then to apply to the courts to have the trust amended um, to able to have that affected. Now, um, if that wasn't known by the trustee and the trustee, you know, just went, the trustee says that I can send this money anywhere um, because it's a badly written, you know, waterfall um, of the beneficiaries. Um you know, can have free reign of your assets. I know you're not around anyway, or your family's not around to see it. But it's not what you wanted. It's not what you wanted for your legacy. It's not what, it, what you wanted for your assets in life. So making sure that you have and you take importance on this. And if this is probably the only thing that you get sorted in your plan B, it's beneficial and it works whether you need to activate it or not. So I implore you to go and have a look today at your trust documents if you've got them. Uh, understand the trust documents and know if you've got a will or not. And uh, if you have overseas assets, make sure you've got a will in that jurisdiction where those assets reside. Um, because some jurisdictions will treat a death totally different to how we treat it here in Australia. So there you go, people. Um, that's why sovereign individuals have a plan B. And it's, as I said, it's an insurance policy. It's there to make sure that your assets are your assets. They work with you it's there to secure your better life um and it could be that you're you're happy with a small pension and that you know that at the end of the day that all your money's going to pretty much run out and what's left you're happy to go to you know the save the gay whales foundation um that is perfectly fine um i have worked with people in the past who go I want everything to be spent on the day. The last day of my life, the credit card will bounce, right? And they are happy. That's that's what they want. That is their choice. It's their plan. But they have everything lined up um, for that to happen. And they've planned it out that way. Um, and that's it. So... I'm going to leave it there. If if you have questions, throw them in the, the chat um, and I'm happy to answer stuff for um, the next couple of minutes. Um, if no one has any any questions, we'll, we'll end it there. And if you do have questions that come to mind um, during the week or before the event uh, on Saturday, and we are running an event on, on, on Saturday, um, and um, and being a, a sovereign person and a sovereign individual and and planning all that out, um, and I'll be running a, another um, session on um, on your plan B uh, during that, um, and um, yeah, I look forward to talking to you later. So let me know if there's any questions. If not, um, I'll uh, I'll finish there. on time for once.
Yep, not a problem, guys. Thank you for attending. And um, I hope you just, if you got one thing out of it, um, that will be, um, you know, that that makes my day. If you've taken one thing away from this uh, and you go on action one thing, uh, that'd be good. So thanks, everyone. Um, doesn't seem to be any questions. Um, and... Um, We'll go from there. All right, guys, thank you very much and um, have a very great night.